When it comes to the biggest LeBron James fan, there is none bigger than LeBron himself. And for the so-called king, he's joined JT Reddick on a new podcast called Mind the Game. And the way this podcast was sold to the audience, it was quote-unquote pure basketball. Now, when I hear that, the vibe I get, kind of pretentious, self-indulgent, and thinking, you know, we're better than everyone else. And after watching the full 40-minute video, my takeaways from this podcast are pretty simple. LeBron James loves himself some LeBron James. And the entire goal of this podcast, in essence, is to convince you and prove to you guys LeBron James is the best player ever and the smartest player ever. And to give you guys a heads up, yes, Michael Jordan in this podcast was mentioned and he was dissed at one point. Now, putting that on the back burner, looking at the intro to this podcast, I thought it was very, very telling what the podcast overall agenda. What makes a great basketball player beyond just talent and skill set? And we touch on a number of things that we think, that we think make a great basketball player. This is about creating separation. Once you get to the highest levels, everybody has talent. Everybody has skill. How do you separate yourself? One of the things we talk about is basketball intelligence. So listen to that intro, the line that just caught me, stopped me dead in my tracks, was quote, this is about creating separation. When I heard that right there, I just immediately thought, this entire podcast has one goal, separate LeBron James from Jordan and prove LeBron James was actually better. And one more telling line, quote, everyone at the highest level has talent. Again, what's the goal of this podcast? To show you guys LeBron James, his basketball IQ, and why that alone separates him from guys like Jordan, Kobe, Magic, etc. And like I mentioned in the intro, Michael Jordan this podcast was referenced, and it wasn't in the greatest light. It, you're right. It started with no, stuff. The, when it comes to influence, since, since I've been watching the game, since I've been watching the game, the most influence on the game, and obviously we know what Mike did for the game. Sure. You know, well, Steph and Allen Iverson are the, the two biggest influential guys in our game since, since I've been watching and covering it, you know. One, they're 6'3". You know, Allen Iverson and Steph, they were just so relatable, and kids felt like they could be them. They were their, they were guys that was not always counted on. They were small in stature, and they just def defined the odds. Now look, don't get me wrong, when it comes to Steph Curry and Iverson, their impact on basketball, basketball culture is immense. But look, we're talking about Michael Jeffrey Jordan, the guy who changed the game and the entire NBA. And looking at someone like Iverson, his overall impact on the culture 100% is felt in 2024, whether it be the arm sleeves, the tattoos, or the overall culture of the NBA. But still, looking at Jordan, his overall cultural impact in the 90s was far superior, and today is still highly relevant. I mean, look at the shoe sales alone. Michael Jordan 2023, 130 million in shoe sales. The top five current NBA players as followed didn't combine for even 110 million. LeBron James, 32 mil. KD, 26. Curry, 20. Harden, 14. And Zion, 13. For a guy in Jordan who hasn't played in over 20 years, to have that long lasting impact, I mean, it is pretty remarkable. And LeBron in his explanation of why Iverson and Steph Curry were just so influential. He said, quote, they were so relatable and you wanted to be like them. Now take two steps back. In the 1990s, what was the big marketing push with Michael Jordan? I dream I move, I move, I dream I groove, like Mike, if I could be like Mike. Oh. When it comes to players, analysts in this century, I just feel like all these guys want to look past the 90s, write them off, and downright ignore them. And looking back at Steph and Iverson, when it comes to being inspired by Jordan, both these guys want to be like Mike. I promise you, there wouldn't be no Hall of Fame Allen Iverson standing at this podium if it wasn't for this guy. 
He gave me the vision, man. You know, you want to be fast like Isaiah, and you want to shoot like Bird, you know, rebound like Barkley, pass like Magic, be dominant like Shaq. But man, I wanted to be like Mike. You know what I mean? Even looking at LeBron James himself, the biggest star in the NBA currently, he wears 23 just like Jordan, made Space Jam just like Jordan, did the chalk toss just like MJ, wore a leg sleeve just like Jordan. Well, first of all, you know, I wear the number because of Mike. Uh, I think I fell in love with the game because of Mike, just seeing what he was able to accomplish. You know, when you're growing up and you're seeing Michael Jordan, you, you, it's almost like a god. For my name to come up in a discussion with the greatest basketball player of all time, uh, it's like it was like wow. Like I said, I've, I did I did pretty much everything that MJ did when I was a kid. I shot fadeaways before I should have. I wore a leg sleeve on my leg and folded it down so you saw the red part. For no reason. I wore black and red shoes with white socks. I wore short shorts cause you, so you could see my undershorts underneath. Hearing LeBron, James, Iverson, and Curry talk about Jordan that way. I mean, isn't that proof Michael Jordan, the most impactful player of all time? In some ways, Michael Jordan's overall impact, it's almost like Curry and Iverson combined. As culturally, much like Iverson, from the shoes, the endorsements, the style, how players dressed, Jordan's impact was immense in that aspect. But also like Curry, changing the game. MJ in the 90s, really the first international star and worldwide ambassador for the league. And that launching point was the 92 Olympics. And a lot of superstars in the 2000s, your Tony Parker, Dirk Nowitzki's, they say Michael Jordan 92 inspired them to play basketball. And now looking at the league in current day, who are the top players in the NBA? The majority of them, international players. And that overall international influence, at the end of the day, comes back to Michael Jordan and his overall impact. Now, looking past LeBron's sneak diss on Jordan, what is the main goal of this podcast? To convince you guys LeBron James, the smartest player who ever lived. I've had teammates that's like, oh, what, what do you what do you mean? Coaches always every in practice we only ran it from this side. Yeah. I, I could flip a play when I was eight years old. No matter if it was just pass and cut, no matter if it was let's run flex, but let's start on the left side. No matter if it was just, you know, let's DHO, DHO, DHO driving cake. The last one, all right, now let's let's just drive the baseline, baseline, drive, drift. I could do that. I was doing that stuff when I was like eight, nine years old, and and my coaches would just be blown away, and I would just, I, I wouldn't know where it came from. I have no idea. So when it comes to the Mind the Game podcast, LeBron James can just lie without any pushback or any rebuttal. Great job, DJ Reddick. This podcast, what it was sold as, was quote unquote pure basketball. But watching the entire conversation, I mean. Yes, they talk about some basic offensive sets, defensive sets, out-of-bounds plays. But besides that, I mean, not really groundbreaking information, at least not yet. The two-for-one shot at the end of quarters. Are you going uh, on an anti-crusade against the two-for-one? I understand (laughs) why the two-for-one is important. Obviously, it's numbers. You get two possessions, the other team gets one possession. In theory, it's a free shot. In theory, it's a free shot. But what people sometimes don't account for, the four or five possessions before that, are we on a run? Are we on a heater? Have we gotten a good shot over the last two and a half minutes? And look, I didn't play in the NBA, not some basketball scholar, but just watching the games night to night basis. Every single team has the awful two for one 27 seconds left, jack up a shot, get the ball back, with around two seconds, get another bad shot. It doesn't take a basketball savant to recognize the awful two-for-ones that are league-wide. Maybe I'm being overly critical of the old man in the room, but I mean, these clips, not really groundbreaking stuff. And in terms of basketball, 
X's and O's, changing my mind, blowing my mind. I mean, some of these clips, just rambling on and on for five minutes, but very simple plays. I mean, one clip I saw that wasn't in the podcast was discussing out-of-bounds plays. And the gist of it, when a player inbounds the ball, a guy curling off a screen, what they should do, have one guy stunt, follow the guy to the screen, but the other guy pop out and guard the player, then go back to his own man. I mean, that concept is like mid-major college type stuff, not groundbreaking information. Maybe episode two will be a little bit better, but so far this podcast, in terms of pure basketball, kind of fell flat. And I think looking past the pure basketball talk, I mean, the agenda in this podcast, sometimes it is subtle, but other times is fairly obvious. Boost up LeBron James, his IQ, how smart he is. And like Reddick said, create separation from the other players. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.